So in this video, we're going to tackle the Gram-Schmidt process. This is the process by which uh, we find an orthonormal, orthonormal basis um, given a set of vectors. So in a previous video, we went over what that was. I'll just recap um, very briefly. Uh, an orthonormal basis is where we have um, multiple vectors. They are all at right angles to each other. That's where we get the word uh, orthogonal. Um, they're all linearly independent, obviously, because they're at right angles. And they're all unit vectors as well. Um, so given just a random set of vectors, how are we going to go about making them all right angles and making them all unit vectors? Um, here's what it's going to look like geometrically. So say we have two random vectors. Here's v1 and here's v2. Okay, we've already learned about projection and that looks like this. If we were to project v2 onto v1, make so it's like casting a shadow down. This piece here becomes the projection uh, onto v1 of v2. And this piece here, um, if that's v, v2, that's the projection, that just becomes v2 minus the projection onto v1 of v2. Uh, but it turns out this piece here is exactly what we want um, because if we take this piece here, we now have v1 and again, v2 minus projection. And that's uh, what we're looking for in an orthonormal basis, right? Now uh, these two are at a right angle. Um, and the only thing that's left to do, we also want them to be unit vectors, so we just have to shorten them by however much brings them down to unit vector shape. So that'll give us u1 and u2. Um, this is the process that we're trying to do. Uh, if we have more than two vectors, it's basically the same. Just now we have another vector in some other direction, uh, third dimension, fourth dimension. Uh, we, need to do the, we basically need to do the same thing. We'll take that original vector, subtract the projection onto v1, and then we'll also have to subtract the projection onto v2 as well. And it just keeps adding up. So in the case of three vectors, such as these three that I have right here, which we're going to do uh, our example on. Um, to get our first vector, we start with, I'm going to label these v1, v2, and v3. And what we're trying to get uh, is our orthonormal basis. And what we're going to try to get, I'm going to call them u1, u2, and u3. So u1 uh, is just going to be v1. That's the one we're starting with. And if you remember in my drawing, I didn't change that one at all. But we just need to shorten it down to unit vector size. Uh, so divided by its length. OK, so u2, as we saw, um, that's going to be v2 minus the projection onto v1 of v2. Um, and because now we have a unit vector for u1, which is in the same direction. We're going to project it onto u1. That's the unit vector. And we remember the formula for that um, is u1 dot v2 um, times u2. I mean u1. Uh, let me say that again. u1 dot v2 times u1. OK, but that's, uh, that's not exactly it. Uh, I'm going to call this u2 prime because we're not exactly done. The real u2 is when we take this result, uh, u2 prime, and we need to divide that by its length. I could have put big parentheses around this uh, and divide that by its length, but um, hopefully that makes it clear. We do this process to it, and then we divide by the length. And for u3, hopefully you can see the pattern here. Now we take v3. We're going to subtract, subtract the projection of v3 uh, onto u2 and the projection of v3 onto u1. OK? Uh, and that we're not done yet. That's going to be prime. And the real u3 comes when we divide by its length to get it down to a unit vector. Uh, 
Okay, sound good? Um, we're going to try to do that with these three vectors now. Um, so we'll start uh, with this step in V1. So the length of V1, uh, here we have 2, 2, and 1. So the length of that is going to be 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. That's 4 plus 4 plus 1. That's 9. And then the square root of that is 3. Um, the length of this is 3. So my u1 is going to be 1 over 3 times my v1. And that's 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 1 third. Cool. All right, now things are going to get a little bit more complicated. Um, so for uh, u2 prime, I'm going to take v2. I'm just going to fill this in with what th these values are. Uh, that's minus 2, 1, 2. And the dot product of u1 right here with v2. OK, um, I better write this all out. So that's the vector 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 1 third. Dotted with uh, minus 2, 1, 2. Times u2. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to move u over as well. Uh, times that one. And that's going to equal uh, minus 2, 1, 2. So you have 2 thirds minus 2. Um, that's minus 4 thirds. Uh, plus 2 thirds. Uh, plus 2 thirds again. And that actually equals 0. So our job is easy. Because <laughs> that's just 0. Um, times this vector. So that's just 0. And our result is, again, um, just the same as v2, uh, minus 2, 1, 2. Uh, and don't forget our last step. We need to uh, normalize this one as well. So it's a unit vector. Uh, and the length of that is going to be 1 over um, the square root of 2 plus 1 plus 2, uh, all squared. So that's, again, that's just the square root of 9, which is 3. So that's our real u2. That was u2 prime. And so our u2, our final answer is minus 2, 3, 2 thirds, 1 third, 2 thirds. Cool. OK, so we have u1, u2, now for u3. All right, we're going to start with uh, vector 3, which is 18, 0, 0. We're subtracting the dot product of u2 um, dotted with v3. So that's going to be pretty easy because these are both zeros. It's just 18 times whatever this first value is, minus 2 thirds. So 18 times minus 2 thirds. Cross out my threes. That's 6 times minus 2 or minus 12. Okay, um, and u1 dotted with v3. So here's v3, here's u1, uh, 18 times 2 thirds. Again, that's just 12. And u1, again, is 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 1 third. All right, um, 
Here, that's a minus sign, that's a minus sign, so this becomes plus. Okay. So, my vector becomes uh, 1800 zero, zero, plus uh, these threes all cancel, so this becomes, uh, if threes cancel out, it's four, that's minus eight, four, eight, and eight, eight, four. And the result of that is, that looks like a times, that's a plus. Okay, 18 minus eight, uh, minus eight minus eight is two. Uh, four minus eight is mi minus four. And eight minus four is positive four. And again, my last step, I need to divide by the length to make sure it's a unit vector. So, um, three, that's gonna be one over the square root of two squared, that's four, plus 16 plus 16. That's uh, 16 plus 16 is 32, plus four is 36. Yay, 36 is a perfect square, uh, and that just gives us six. So one six times two minus four, four. And that's equal to one third minus two thirds and two thirds. Whew. All right, so we've reached the end. Um, that is U3, this guy right here. And now we have our orthonormal basis. Uh, I'm going to write it down here as U1, U2, and U3, just so you can see. U1 is two thirds, two thirds, one third. U2 is minus two, one, two. And that's uh, one minus two, two. Awesome. So here we have our translated version of V1, V2, and V3 into an orthonormal basis. They're all at right angles to each other, and they're all uh, unit vectors as well. Um, so that's all we have to do for that. This is the Gram Schmidt process. Uh, I hope this example has been helpful for you. Um, check out other videos as well um, for more linear algebra stuff. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and any of the other math-related videos on our channel. If you're not subscribed to our channel, click this link right here. For more help with linear algebra, check out Worldwide Differential Equations with Linear Algebra by Robert McCohen or Elementary Linear Algebra by Bruce Cooperstein. Both are available at an affordable price in digital formats on our website. Just click this link right here.